Hi all, um, my name is Nicole Mägle. I'm from the FZI Research Center in Karlsruhe. And I want to talk today about uh, how to program context-aware RL agents by means of semantic media wiki. So the last time I had also a talk in Barcelona and I want to give a short retrospective about this talk because um, this talk which I will give today is based on this talk which I had in Barcelona. So in this talk, in those days, I introduced ambient assisted living. Um, ambient assisted living means, in the first case, that you have, uh, it's a term you, that you have services, methodologies, and um, devices in the environment in order to assist elderly and impaired people. And I also introduced the term web of things um, in order to show that the web of things is necessary in such an environment. Later I will talk about it also. And I also introduced how to model an ambient assisted living domain by means of semantic media wiki. And um, in, th in those days also I talked about the Sherlock engine, but there it was not yet really devised. So today I want to talk about the Sherlock engine as an assistive agent, and I want to show by means of the Sherlock agent how to program this agent by means of semantic media wiki. So why is this relevant? Well, if a developer wants to implement uh, different kind of applications for the ambient assisted living environment, then there are a lot of APIs, a lot of protocols and programming languages. And so the problem is the developer has to implement against different APIs and has to learn also different APIs. So as you can see here. So here I want to give again a retrospect about the Web of Things approach, why we need the Web of Things approach. Well, we have devices in the environment, we have things of interest in the environment, and we have to describe them in a way that ambient assisted living <laughs> applications can evaluate or process this information. And the idea is that you describe everything which is relevant in the environment by means of a thing description. So the thing description um, provides a semantical representation which is uh, devised by a URI, so everything is unique and everything can cause maybe an action and or in, an action can be invoked by a thing and can cause an event and everything has uh, characteristics which can be described by properties. And the basic objective is that it is machine understandable, so that's why we make it semantically. And now this Web of Things approach foresees that we use web protocols because web protocols are standardized, so the applications or the agents inside the environment can request this thing descriptions and then process this in order to provide appropriate services to the elderly person. Now I want to talk about the Sherlock agent. Well, the Sherlock agent has the objective to infer the user intention in order to provide adequate services to the user. And how is this be done? Well, our Sherlock agent um, consumes all uh, thing descriptions which are provided by the Web of Things and also gets its program, so its intelligence, by Semantic Media Wiki, and then can provide appropriate services. And the vision is we have distributed Sherlock agents running, so different uh, instances of the Sherlock agent, and we have different IoT devices inside the RL environment, and now the Sherlock agents are distributed and providing different tasks for the user or for the elderly person. For instance, we could imagine we have a Sherlock agent which is monitoring uh, the coffee uh, drinking of the user so it can provide or it can trigger maybe the coffee machine in order that the user gets its coffee, his coffee or her coffee. Or we have another Sherlock agent who is maybe um, controlling the lamps inside the environment. And now the idea is that we have a developer who wants to implement a new Sherlock agent and the developer just needs to 
uh, provide a program inside the semantic media wiki which can be used by a new Sherlock agent which is programmed always in the similar way. So we have a similar process and then we start, start the Sherlock agent and then the Sherlock agent can request the appropriate program which is provided by the developer inside semantic media wiki. So how does this look like? Well, we have here our Sherlock, uh, uh, our developer, sorry, and our Sherlock agent instance. And now the developer creates inside the semantic media wiki a description, a service description, which is shown on the right side of this presentation. And you can see that we annotate different information which is necessary for the Sherlock agent in order to process its service. And then, as you know, the Semantic Media Wiki generates a RDFS representation, and here we can see how it looks like in a graph representation. So we have here a service notation or a program, which is similar to the program of Sherlock, and the service notation is linked to actions, to rules. These rules are very important for the Sherlock agent because our Sherlock agent wants to make reasoning. And we also provide in the service description a query so the Sherlock agent is able to query the context of the user. And then we have also here linked uh, some devices which are of interest for our Sherlock agent because our Sherlock agent um, is subscribing for these devices in order to react to device events in the environment. And now the only thing our Sherlock instance has to do is to implement different kind of APIs in this case Swirl API, OL API, Spin API, and the Web of Things API, and that's all. So I will later show you, I will later talk about um, these languages which can be processed by these APIs. Okay, and then our Sherlock agents just requests the appropriate service description by the Semantic Media Wiki and has then its program and can process it according to the program, the appropriate service for the user. Okay, now I want to talk about the rules or the rules which are used for programming our Sherlock agent. The first rule language would be semantic web rule language, abbreviated SWIL. And this semantic web rule language is a first order logic language. And uh, the structure is always so that you have premises. These are uh, conjunctions of terms and a conclusion which is following this uh, conjunction of terms. And these terms are triples, so you have always a subject, predicate, and object, or you have uh, instances of classes, so you can describe instances of some classes which are given there. Then we have uh, Sparkle. I think most of you know what is Sparkle. It's a query language for querying RDFS graphs, and you have the possibility to make different uh, queries against a Sparkle graph, uh, uh, RDFS graph, I mean, sorry. And then we have the Sparkle inferencing notation, which is abbreviated SPIN, called SPIN. And here the idea is to save Sparkle queries in RDFS representation. So you can define inside the Sparkle queries appropriate rules, which then can be later executed by our Sherlock agent. And now the idea is to embed this kind of uh, rule languages inside our semantic media wiki and to annotate them in order that our Sherlock agent can request these appropriate rules inside the service description. So here on this slide, um, I already introduced this in the last talk. We had devised an ambient assisted living ontology and I will just talk about the classes which are on the red box. So that's the topic or the main focus of my talk, well, it's the program for our Sherlock agent. So as I said, we have a service description and the service description is linked in this case to an intention. Intention means the user intention. So we try to describe inside this intention class the user intention. And this intention is then also linked to the appropriate rules which are necessary for our Sherlock agent and to appropriate context queries in order to get context information of the environment and of the user. So now the question is how would the rules look like? So in the green box on top, you can see a swill representation of a rule. So 
and on, on the bottom of this, uh, you can see the human readable, what I am expressing in this rule. So you have an assisted person, and, this assisted, and you have a lamp, and this lamp has a state off in this case, and we have an ambient light sensor, so an instance of an ambient light sensor, and this ambient light sensor has a state, and the state is lower than 600 lux, and we have a user who is wearing an eye tracking glass, and we have uh, the eye tracking glass has in focus a device of type lamp. And then further, we can then infer out of this rule that the user wants to switch the lamp on or not. So then our Sherlock agent decides what the user wants to do in this situation. The same here is a sparkle example. So our Sherlock agent wants to know about the context. In this case, give me all temperature sensors which are in the living room and which state is greater than 25 degrees Celsius degrees. And on the right side, then, you can see the appropriate sparkle representation of this. So we have here a select query. And then in the where clause is defined the appropriate filtering triples. So since we, we are searching for a sensor which has, has the state Celsius degree, and the sensor has to be of type um, temperature sensor, and the sensor has to be um, located in the living room. And we filter the sensors which are lower than 25 degrees. And on the, on the bottom of the slide, you can see how it looks like then in a wiki page site. So we are annotating the Sparkle query inside the wiki page. And then our Sherlock agent can request this from the wiki and then process it. And here is an example with spin. Um, on the left side, we have used a template. So this template annotates our spin rule. And it gives also a description about what is the spin rule doing. And this template is assigned to a semantic forms. And the developer can then enter inside the semantic forms the appropriate rules and also provide a description of this rule, what it is doing or what, it, what does it intend to do. And then if you save this, uh, this semantic form site, then we, it, uh, generate, uh, a semantic media wiki is generated. And then our Sherlock agent is able to request this appropriate spin rule. OK, now here I am showing how this is processed. So first of all, our developer creates the appropriate rules inside or the service description with the appropriate rules. Then RDF is extracted into a triple store, which, has, which is also providing a Sparkle endpoint. And now our Sherlock instance is starting. It can start on different kind of devices. And then first of all, it requests its service description. So we get the service description. And then in this service description, it is provided to which kind of devices the Sherlock agent has to subscribe. So it subscribes in this case for, a, for the devices of type lamp and for devices of type eye tracking glass. And then we assume now a device event is occurring. So the user who is wearing an eye tracking glass has detected a lamp with his eye tracking glass. This in device event goes to the Web of Things server and um, is forwarded to our Sherlock agent, which has before subscribed for these events. And then our Sherlock agent makes reasoning by means of the service description, which it has requested before. And then it can trigger the appropriate action, which is also sent to the Web of Things server. And then this is forwarded, and the lamp is turned on or off appropriate to the situation and the evaluation of the rules. OK, now the point is this was static because we are uh, providing static information inside the semantic media wiki. But now we want that our Sherlock agent is able to learn uh, by the sensor states uh, the appropriate actions which have to be triggered. And um, yeah, how can this be done? Well, the idea is to use the rules which are the basis for our Sherlock program uh, in order to collect appropriate data sets. So the terms are providing the data uh, sets which are necessary, so which will be collected by our Sherlock agent. 
and we also have the labeled data because we have the actions which were executed by the Sherlock agent. So we have then an appropriate data set and now by means of this data set our Sherlock agent is able to apply machine learning techniques to learn the appropriate user intentions or actions to be triggered at, uh, regarding appropriate uh, sensor states in the environment. And we, we have chosen uh, an appropriate machine learning um, approach. In this case, a very simple one. It's the naive base classifier, um, which is based on the base theorem. And it says we have a probability, so it's a probabilistic approach. Um, in this case, we compute then in the classifier the probability of an action given some evidences in the environment. And this is done by um, multiplying the probability of an evidence given an action by the uh, probability of this action and then divided through the probability of the evidences. And then we do this for all actions which we want to classify and then we compare which of these actions have the highest probability and then we can say, okay, this is the conclusion, this kind of action shall be triggered by the Sherlock agent. And now the idea here or the problem is we have maybe two different kind of conclusions. One of our rule-based engine and the other conclusion of our classifier. So in this case, we compare both conclusions and then if both are not equal, we can say, okay, we have an uncertain situation. And in these cases, then we are, uh, we are asking the user to confirm the appropriate action. And this information goes again to, uh, again to our classifier and improves the classifier. So because we have, again, labeled data from the user. Okay, uh, now I'm almost at the end of my talk to wrap this all up. I, we have seen that we can use embedded queries and rules for programming software agents inside uh, ambient assisted living environments. And we have also seen um, that the Sherlock agent instances just need to implement appropriate rules, which are related to the appropriate rule languages. And we have also seen that these rules which are provided by the developer inside Semantic Media Wiki can be a basis for learning the context of the user and the user intention. And that we can combine machine learning and a rule-based approach in order to solve the problem of uncertainty. And it was also shown why we use the Web of Things um, in order to, um, to overcome the problem of uh, ha having heterogeneous devices in the environment. Okay, now future work or an outlook is of this work that we could imagine to implement a semantic media wiki bot or to use a semantic media wiki bot in order to adjust the given rules by the machine learning approach so that we can um, change the rules or adapt the rules appropriate to the data sets which we are collecting and then write it inside the semantic media wiki. But that's future work then. Okay, now at the end I just want to show a demo video which is showing a light Sherlock in action. Okay. So first of all, I'm starting a Sherlock instance on a, um, on a smartphone. But there is no, no voice I see. And the Sherlock agent is requesting then the appropriate service description. And then I'm simulating an eye tracking class. So the eye tracking class is sending a device event to the Sherlock agent. And now the Sherlock agent reasons this. Yeah, unfortunately, there's no, no voice. <laughs> so you cannot hear what the Sherlock agent is saying. And then the user confirms the appropriate action and then we can see that the lamp was turned on. Okay, that was it. Thank you.
I, I don't know if I re really understand what you. So that's the idea by the Web of Things server. So the Web of Things server has the objective to abstract the devices in the environment because they are heterogeneous. So everything has to provide uh, device descriptions and the appropriate um, applications or agents which want to access the, this information can request this information by the Web of Things server. But that was not the question. I, I don't know. Not yet, not yet. But maybe we will make it open source. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Yes, I think I would use a library in, in these cases and try also different kind of approaches out. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Further questions? Uh, not yet. I spin I want to consider in the next step, but for making it, for showing whole possibilities which we consider, I also take spin inside the presentation, but not yet. Yes, so Swirl yeah, I'm using, Sparkle I'm using. One problem is that it is very slow. So I have used the Swirl API and the reasoning lasts a long time. This could be, yeah, but I have to evaluate it. I don't know why. Yeah, I think it could be also because of OL, because of the OL API, because I use this in combination with the Swirl API. Okay, thank you.